Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review and today's game up on the tabletop is Asylum Escape by Blind Eddie Games. This is a 3-7 to seven player game that's for ages 15 and up and takes roughly about 25-45 to 45 minutes to play. And in the game you are playing in the Asylum. You're going to need to be playing as the patients, one person, or you'll be playing as the victims, which is multiple players. You have to play at least three players, which means there's always going to be at least two victims and one patient but for each additional player, you'll add in more victims. Uh, to begin the game, you're going to be setting up this random grid here that makes up the asylum. The patients are going to go into their starting room. Players are going to get their victims. They're going to secretly write down on a piece of paper where they're going to be. And then the game's going to begin with patients and then victims moving back and forth. Patients trying to kill the victims and victims trying to survive and outwit the other victims so that they are the last victim remaining. Three turns pass and the victim's still alive, the game is over and they win. Otherwise, if the patients can kill all the victims, the patient player will win. We'll talk about the setup, how to play, and then of course, my review. To set up the game Asylum Escape, the first thing you do is you take out the mat and place it on the table within reach of all players. Take all the room cards, and there should be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 of them, shuffle them up, and then make a grid, a 5x5 five five grid, just like you see here. All the cards should be randomized for each and every game. Then, give each player a character. If the pl one player is playing as the patients, you'll give that person a random patient from the regular patient deck. That player is going to look at the top of the card. It'll be the name of the character and how many, um, what die number it needs to roll or higher in order to defeat a patient. And then it will also have either a special ability uh, and or it'll also have a location that it starts in. In this case, it's the conference room. And in this case, it happens to be in the middle of the table. Each other player is going to be playing as a victim, and they're going to draw one of the victims. We have Jane and Alex, and we have Ellie and Othello. Uh, each of the victims have a positive and negative perk. Ellie and Othello basically are best buds, and so the patients must roll twice in order to defeat them, not just once. So if this character needs to roll a six or higher on a six-sided die to defeat Ellie and Othello, they'll have to do it twice. Six and then six. Ooh, very challenging. Additionally, though, the negative is that all bloodlust cards, the cards that the patients will draw in the game, affect Ellie and Othello, even if they're not targeting them. Jane and Alex, however, have the ability to draw two cards on their turn as opposed to the normal one. And additionally, they double the fun by adding plus one to each patient roll against them. Uh, the, each player that is playing as one of these uh, victims here is also going to draw a camo slash sabo cards to start the game with. Then, you're going to shuffle the decks and make sure you place them within reach of all players. The movement deck, the camo slabo deck, extra victims, extra patients, special patients, and bloodlust cards. Set aside the standees for additional uh, patients that might show up in the game, as well as your die and your coin that you'll need. That's all you'll need to do to set up the game, how to play. Let's go into it. Starting the game is actually quite simple. How it works is the player who is playing as the patients will begin, and they're going to start by taking their coin here, which may look different in your game than mine, I'm just using a quarter, and they're going to flip it. And based on what they flip, whether it's heads or tails, they're going to either move one or two spaces respectively. You can look in the rule book, and I, hopefully they're going to add a player reference here, but after you have moved, uh, or when you move, you can only move up, down, left, or right. And so when you move, you'll go, I'm going to move here to the parking lot, or I'm going to go to the hallway of dread. If you're moving two spaces, you can go up two, or up one and left one, or right one. It's really up to you. And let's just say that I went ahead and only moved one. So I'll go to the break room here. From there, I'm going to ask the other players, because remember, the setup for the game, each of the victims secretly wrote down on a piece of paper where their characters are. And this game has a little bit of honesty that needs to be involved with it. But basically, when players are moving their victims or when victims are in a certain space, whenever the patients walk onto a victim space, the victims need to announce it. Ah, oh, hey, that's my space. And if that happens, what's going to occur is a battle. Battles are really simple. You're basically going to take the die as the patient. You're going to check to see what number you need to roll. In this case, it's a six plus. Target the patient that's in the location, roll the die, and if you succeed, you destroy the, 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 the victim. They're instantly gone. Uh, if the victim passes away, that will remove the character from the game and the player. And what will happen is the room that you're in is also going to be removed. You're going to move your character card uh, uh, I believe it's up one space and all the rest of the cards will kind of condense in to create a smaller version of the game, a smaller grid. However, 
if there is no specific victim in the location, which is gonna be pretty, it's gonna be pretty average that that happens, you're simply going to draw a bloodlust card. As long as there is no victims on any of the patients that you have's location, after you're done rolling, you draw one of these babies here. Um, additionally, if you fail to roll and you don't defeat one of them, you will actually go ahead and draw one of these guys here. And this one here says we must be silent. No victim may use camo cards until the patient's next turn. So this prevents the bad, the, the, the bad evil pay, uh, victims from being able to use their special cards to get away from us good guy killers. Additionally too, if you were on the location as a victim and a patient was there and tried to attack you and failed to attack you, you're actually gonna need to draw a movement card, re reveal it, and move that many spaces. In this case, it would be three. So the character that is playing as the victim who was on the space would secretly move three spaces away from wherever the patient is uh, and wherever they started. After the patient has taken their turn by Flipping the coin, moving one or two spaces, checking to see if there's a character there or not, and engaging or drawing a bloodlust card if they fail to engage or fail to find a patient, it is then going to be the um, victim. It's going to be the victim's turn. And how this works is the victims are each going to go in turn order, and they're going to get, going to, get to draw a camo slash sabo card, or they can draw a movement card. They can pick any one of their choice. If you're playing as certain characters, like Jane and Alex, you actually can draw two cards. Uh, but if you draw two movement cards, you have to discard down to one. When you pick up a card, uh, then you're going to have the opportunity to use it. In this case, she used a movement, so she'll have the move two. She will go ahead and move two spaces on the game board from wherever she was, and secretly write that down. And that would be it for them. They can also use Samo, Sabo and cam, uh, Camo cards, uh, but it's going to be based on the card. Uh, certain ones are going to be instantaneous, and other ones are going to be only on your turn. Uh, the other character would do the same thing. They'll draw a card, and maybe they can draw just another Camo Sabo, and they'll maybe just stay wherever that they are. And you can actually just go ahead and draw and hold cards into your hand. I believe you can have up to seven cards in your hand. Once that is done, the round will end and the victim or the patients, the victims will end their turn and the patient player will begin. And it'll be round two. And you'll continue doing this over and over again up until round four. When round four hits, a new patient will enter the fray. You'll take on duality and these guys are going to go to the med bay. Now, with two patients, the patient player is going to have double the trouble uh, for the victims. They're still going to do the same thing by flipping this coin here. They'll move both patients, either one or two spaces, attempt to encounter victims, and they'll roll to defeat them. If neither patient finds the victim, then, of course, they're going to draw a bloodlust card and read off the effects. And if they do defeat a victim, then they're going to collapse the room and condense the board. The last thing that you need to know about this game is that on the seventh round, a special patient is going to enter the fray. In this case, it could be happiness, and happiness starts in the fun room. And happiness has a win on a three plus, which means that they are extremely deadly. And in fact, eventually there will be only one player left. There's almost, there is no way you can have two people on the victim's team survive. These guys are eventually gonna be drawing strong bloodlust cards and condensing down the location of the players, thinking about where they're gonna be moving strategically and then defeating them down to the last player. When there's only one player left, then it's going to trigger the last three rounds of play. And at the end of every um, time the patients like move, they're actually gonna be removing their locations from the board and uh, the board is gonna be condensed smaller and smaller and smaller up into the last round of play. And if the victim escapes without being <laughs> murderized by the patients here, the victim's gonna win. Otherwise, if the patients can deal with them and defeat the last victim, the patients will win. And there you go, that's how you play the game. Asylum Escape is a hidden movement game, but the heroes, the victims, are the ones that are gonna be hidden movement. The killer slash patient player, who is going to have multiple patients throughout the game, slowly, collectively, from the fourth and seventh round up to three patients, maybe even more with bloodlust cards, and they're trying to track down those victims until there's just one left. Of course, the patient player is simply just trying to defeat everybody and secure their victory, whereas everybody else is not necessarily trying to escape as much as they are trying to make sure that everyone else is captured and they're the last person left. And that, might, and that might involve the bear technique of, I do not need to outrun the bear, I just need to outrun you. So kicking you in the shin and allowing the bear to eat you 
is my success towards victory, where you're being eaten, and now I have three turns to kind of escape. Maybe I'm very far away on the board, and they can't seem to find me. Uh, usually utilizing movement cards, camo and sabo cards are important, and there's a vast variety of different camo and sabo cards that do a ton of different things in the game. Movement can be anywhere between one and three, and also move to any location spaces on the board, which can be quite powerful as well as your abilities that you can utilize. Jane and Alex being able to draw lots of extra cards, but also allowing the patients to get a plus one bonus on their roll against them. Ooh, good and terrible. Same thing with Ellie and Othello. They basically can survive twice uh, or once as opposed to just being instantly killed. But anytime I use a Bloodlust as the patient on Jane and Alex, Ellie and Othello will take a beating as well. The fact that there are different patients in the game is really cool. They range from being like four plus on a die roll, five plus, six plus. Eventually when you get to the special patients, you can have it be a two plus or a three plus, or it could be a one, two, four, and six roll on the die. And they're very strong. Also, some of the patients will have abilities. Some of them are actually gonna have a unique ability set uh, that you can utilize in the game, like running blindly add one to your movement. So while Blind Eddie is kind of crap, he's only a six plus on a roll, he does have the ability to move bonus one speed. So he can catch up to, to the victims a lot easier. So you're really only gonna be moving one or two spaces unless you draw a Bloodlust card and it gives you some bonus. This guy's always gonna be able to go at least two spaces. So lots of extra rolls for Blind Eddie. And then you have something like the duality. These guys are five plus, also not that great, but they can split. Add one patient to the game for three of your turns. Their room isn't destroyed or nullified, uh, uh, and, you, and you nullify their effect. So you don't actually get rid of any rooms or whatever, but you do get, can add an extra patient to the game with these specific guys here. So more patients means more rooms are being covered and cleared, and as more of the victims pass away, these rooms get removed. Speaking of rooms, some of them have unique abilities that are potentially once a game, uh, like when a patient ends their turn in the observation room, they can choose a victim, and that victim will show you their location. That's really powerful, but it's only once a game, and once this room is done, it's it's done. There's not a lot of cards that let you activate another, another room again. There are some patients, I believe, and some bloodlust cards that can do that. Med Bay, when a victim leaves the room, they may draw two cards that turn instead of one. And so these are all the different abilities that happen in the game. The game is pretty simple. Flipping the coin, moving the patients, uh, interacting with any of your abilities that you have, landing on the victims, rolling the die, defeating them, and if not, drawing a Bloodlust card, progressing the game, then, of course, the victim's going to turn, drawing a card from either the movement or from the camo sabo, and playing the cards that they'd like to play. Few qualms or questions I have. <clears throat> Can you save your movement cards? I was never sure. I went through the rules. I couldn't figure it out. I imagine it would be a better experience. And we did play. We played the, the both ways, uh, where you could and where you couldn't. Um, but it seems like I'm guessing that you can't. Once you draw a movement card, especially at least when you escape one of the patients, you draw a movement card and simply escape instantly. But I don't know if you can save them from round to round. Um, or if you just have to play one when you get one. Vertical rows and columns. So this game needs to just say... Uh, columns and rows, not vertical rows. There's just like little issues in the texting. Uh, once per game, uh, tokens, how many patients can be on a space? Doesn't really explain that necessarily. I imagine that it's only one patient per space. I don't think I can move all the patients onto the same space. And then we didn't have an extra, there's no extra coin here. Maybe it could be an extra die. I mean, just like some small little clarifications that could be condensed in this game to make things a little bit more straightforward. I mean, sometimes the abilities, I feel like they could be once a game for these guys, or maybe they're the entire game. Um, normally I was assuming that it's whenever there's a colon, the two dots, that is a once a game thing. Um, and then whenever there's a dash, it's the entire game. Um, but then there were some rule, some cards that kind of broke that. I mean, it is, it is actually, I know it sounds like a lot of stuff, but it is actually very, very minimal and we barely ran into the issues, but just a little bit of clarity with those kind of things would be nice. Uh, and the last gripe I have is I love the art in this game. I think this game has some wonderful art, in fact. Uh, I really wish it was just full art. It's full art with light, uh, with the, just the text on the bottom in a way that's graphically designed to not like have all these extra colors and, I mean, we didn't even use the colors in the game really. Maybe it could just be a bottom row of color or something. But I don't like all these boxes and whatnot. It's just, 
it, it could be, I want this art to be more illustrated on the card to show more of the art. I think it looks really good. And so I want to include that more. Um, speaking of art for the rest of the game, I love the back of all the cards. I love the bloody grotesque theme of the game. I really like the different characters. They are creepy, they are nasty, the patients, and even the kids um, and or patient, the victims. Um, maybe thematically doesn't make as much sense to have the victims just be pretty much anybody. I like that being there's like nurses and doctors and that kind of thing. So it feels like the patients are running around messing with them. Uh, this seems to have some of that going on and also just a bunch of other unique characters in the game. It's not really a bad thing, just thematically maybe. Um, and then of course the box is beautiful. I actually really like the style of box. Um, it just really flows really well with the theme of the game. The mat is excellent, and the game is simple, straightforward, and easy to play. Being able to move around and have a unique twist on a hidden movement game where players are able to uh, play as the victims and now be hidden as opposed to the, the bad guys being hidden like Fury of Dracula and Mr. X and... Uh, I'm, I'm, there's... So, I can't, there's so many other ones I'm thinking of that are just basically the killer or the bad guy is the one that's going around in the hidden movement aspect. And in this case, it's the opposite, which I really found pretty fascinating. The overall experience was a lot of fun. It's a pretty standard game. Um, patience, I kind of wish they were all just balanced as far as the patients do. I felt some of them felt just straight up better than others and special patients as well. I wish they just had different ways to make, to make abilities just like all the same feeling. No matter which one I drew, a patient was still going to feel like a patient, not a bad patient or a good patient. Uh, the characters actually, all of them worked really well. I liked all the different victims in the game. Their abilities were powerful, their negative effects were really negative, and it just felt good. They all felt so unique in the game and it was fun to play these guys. Anyway, overall, I really enjoyed this game. It was a lot of fun. I just want to clear up just a few little things with the game. Hopefully when this game has come out, it's, it's fully cleared. Just little issues that I had with it. But otherwise, it's a lot of fun. And if you're looking for a game that's hidden movement for the good guys, then go ahead and take a look at Asylum Escape. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Asylum Escape. If you're interested in picking up the game, there will be a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and take a look. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our whatnot streams are usually on Thursdays, and our live streams are on Sundays on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and X, or Twitter and YouTube. YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, X. Those are the four platforms. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Hit the bell notification button so you can see more videos that we create just like this one here. And of course, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to escaping the asylum without you, because I'm going to kick you in the shin so that the patients will terrorize you. I mean, sorry, it's, I, I have to do it. It's you or me next time.